Hello, everyone, and welcome to Humble Beginnings Ministries. I'm your host, Pastor Stephen Woods, and I'm just blessed that you would tune in today as we react to another video. One video in particular that I want to talk about is there's a segment in June 13th, June 13th, 2024, Bishop Patrick Wooden does a great job explaining some things that I believe is worth talking about in the body of Christ. So without further ado, I just want to say a few things about Bishop Patrick Wooden. First thing is, is that I really have a lot of respect for this man. He speaks the truth. He's bold in his convictions and his commitment to Christ. I applaud him for his love for Christ and his love for the people of God. And without further ado, I just want to say thank God for men of integrity, just like Bishop Patrick Wooden. Let's now begin to go into this video where Bishop Patrick Wooden it's going to begin to talk about some things that we will begin to discuss. Without, without, for, without delaying the time, let's listen in. Bishop Patrick Wooden. Let me tell you something. You have to guard your spirit. Many shall come saying that I am the Messiah. I am the way. And as we get closer to the coming of Christ, they will throw off more and more on biblical Christianity. Every church that claims to be woke is asleep. Now, Bishop Patrick Wooden is actually talking about this whole woke ideology that is just running rampant throughout the body of Christ. And if we're not careful, we too will get caught up in this dilemma. The dilemma of what? Embracing the world's ideology of being woke. And that is dangerous to the unity. It is a threat to the unity of the body of Christ. The Bible says, by this will the world know you are my disciples by the love you have for one another. What does that mean? Not just loving everyone that looks like you. Not just loving everyone that acts like you, that has the same social status as you, that is successful or not as successful, successful as you. It means loving everyone, black, white, Native American, Hispanic, Arabic, Chinese, Asian, whatever background you come from, under the cross of Calvary, being united together by what? By faith in Christ alone. Let's listen to what Bishop's going to say. He says some pretty strong things here, so let's prepare ourselves. Put your seatbelts on. Let's listen in. And the downright stupid. Wokeness, wokeness uh, equates Christianity to whiteness. So he's saying wokeness equates Christianity to whiteness, meaning, oh, it's a white man's religion. And that's what we're seeing here today. A lot of other cultures are embracing this type of ideology trying to trace it back to being one particular kind of skin color. But Bishop Patrick Wooden is going to bring some clarification that I believe is important for us in the body of Christ. So now, how are you going to be a church and believe that? You know, and then wokeness equates being on time to whiteness. <laughs> you might have a point, but listen. You better fix that. I'm gonna let it stay. Come on. The point I'm making is you can't let nobody make your color a religion. And this is so true. Listen to what he's saying here. You and I cannot make our color and equate it to religion. Whether it's white, whether it's black. In the early church, they had the same similar distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles. Should the Gentiles eat meat? Should they not eat meat? Should they get circumcised? Should they not get circumcised? And they were, but there are so many who have extended it today, like black Hebrew Israelites. Oh, we're the true chosen people of God, not those white people, right? They're taking their religion and mixing it with skin color and saying, you only qualify. You can only worship with us. If you look like us, if you do what we do, and you say what we say. Let's listen in. Oh, and I, I refuse to believe 
I just refuse to believe that past wrongs and indiscretions of people of decades and decades ago, maybe even a century ago, has more effect on my upward mobility and what I can do in my life and with my life. I don't believe that past sins has a greater effect than the decisions that I make every day. So now he's about to get into something deep. Let's set the precedence here. What is Bishop about what he's about to say and what he's saying right now? Let's be clear. Bishop, and he's clear in his own right. So listen, this doesn't really call for further clarification other than this. When I'm watching this, Bishop's saying, listen, I'm not blaming any type of white man for whether or not I've been able to be successful. I'm not blaming another black man for that matter. I'm not blaming the Chinese, the Asian, the African-American, or whoever else. But it fit the, the context fits more, is what he's saying, is that the white man is not holding me down. He's not holding me back. He's not hindering me from being successful. No matter what and how much we want to equate anything that happened in the past, I'm not going to say that because we were enslaved and there was white men who had slave owners, even though there was also black men that had slaves. He's saying, I am not equating this to that. Let's listen in. I believe that what I do and how I live and how I behave will speak to my uh, trajectory and my promotion and my doing good or bad in society. I think that will have a greater effect than any slavery that took place years before I was even born. He says a mouthful here. I don't know about you all, but see, I'll watch different reaction videos from people that I don't normally agree with. And the whole fact of the reason is, is because I want to get an understanding of where they're coming from. There is a man out there by the name of Larry Reed. He has his show, Larry Reed Live. And he starts to say why we're not going to put our black dollars in a white man's offering or I don't go for having a white man as a senior pastor and I'm a black man and there's nobody in senior leadership and all the all those kind of crazy things. Right. Listen, I want to tell you so you can get context of where I'm coming from. And the reason why I want to say this is because what Bishop Patrick Wooden is saying, it must be discussed. It should be talked about. He's already laid it out on the table. Right. And that is this. Having a, a black wife and a, a family together with my wife, I've served under many senior pastors who were black. The first pastor I had in my life is, is black. And guess what? To this day, me and have a, him have a solid relationship. He's mentored me, he's discipled me, he's loved on me, and he's always taught me how to carry myself as a pastor, as a leader, as a husband, as a father, all of these things. And to hear something come out of Bishop Patrick's mouth, Bishop Patrick Wooden's mouth like it is, is so relieving. It's relieving in the sense that we need to get through this time in which we're in, and it's difficult times. These things are tough, and, and guess what? A lot of people don't understand it. So when you have people on the opposite end of the spectrum, to my point, Larry Reed, who gets up and says things on his Facebook page. I don't know how many on average he reaches, but listen in to this. Even though he's listen, he's saying the things he's saying, like our black dollars aren't going there until you set us free and the spirit of the master. Everything that he is accusing white people of doing is completely and totally wrong. I don't know one white man today that owns black slaves. I'm sorry. Let's just be honest about it. Let's be real about it. But also, when you say that we're not going to give to 
a senior pastor who's white, I'm not saying this because I don't in any way, let me just put it right out there. I'm not offended by what he said. I'm not even affected by what he said. But what I am saying is this, we need to do better. That kind of hate, it spreads and spits uh, division and disunity. And then he goes on to say in the same video that to the homosexual community, if there's nobody in the pulpit who's just like you, who can speak for you, you shouldn't sit up under that kind of leadership. Listen, first and foremost, let's get it something clear. Being white or black, you have no control over when you come into this world. That is something that's God ordained. But your sexual preference and that lifestyle that you're trying to promote that's against God, number one, that's in disobedience to God. Listen, I don't care if it's an adulterer. I don't care if it's a fornicator, a homonger, or a homosexual. None of those with that type of lifestyle belong in God's pulpit. First of all, you can't speak for God until you first submitted to the word of God yourself and you've humbled yourself before a holy God. Now it's different if you were a former homosexual or a former lesbian or a former transgender and you've been transformed by the gospel of grace and you're no longer living in that lifestyle. Then I could see you, if God's called you to that place, that you would have a place in leadership. But until then, you need to sit down and be discipled. And I say that in humility and love because God is a holy God. And guess what? With him being holy, we need to live in a way that is holy. So now let's listen. So Bishop Patrick Wooden is saying, let's get back to the point. He's saying, listen, I'm not going to blame anyone. I'm going to take responsibility for my actions, for what I do and do not do, because I'm hindering my own progress. I'm hindering what I'm doing. Let's listen to what he said. And he said, I'm not going to blame slavery, and I'm not going to blame anyone else but myself. Let's listen in. The problem with a lot of this stuff is they, they don't ever blame the person. Man robbed the bank, and you're going to, yes, he robbed it, but, you know, that's, that's, that's institutionalized racism. So the racism gave him the gun drove him to the bank, and it was racism in him that said, stick him up. No, he made a bad decision. He did that. And the reason I feel the way I do, there's too many, there's too many of us, there are too many people who look like us who are doing too good, who are succeeding, who are getting ahead. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying that the country is perfect. There's no perfect country. There's no perfect place. It's not perfect for anybody. New York. So do you see what he's saying? And what he's saying is the truth. And we need to be united by the preaching and the teaching of the truth of the gospel. And Bishop Wooden's doing a great job doing it. I commend what Bishop is doing and standing for the truth against the day in the, in the age of this woke ideology that has infiltrated so many churches and so many churches have gone astray from the truth of God's word. Even the Southern Baptists are guilty of this. So let's listen in what he's saying. There's no perfect country, just like there's no perfect church. But let's listen in. He's going to say some key things coming up that we can really be blessed if we have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I don't know that white folk have challenges too. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Just go on, just drive on, go through a few intersections. You find white people standing there with a sign. People, it's, it's, not, it's not a color thing. Thank God we live in a country where it's more of a personal choice. You, you can choose. See, that's what, y'all don't like that. You don't like what I'm saying. I, I imagine they'll let me have it online. Now. And when you, when you tell the truth like this, you know what they say? Oh, he's, he's oversimplifying. Well, walk into oversimplification and get blessed. That's right. Walk in it. Praise the Lord. Let me make it as simple as possible. Obey it and watch God bless you. See, if we obey what he's saying, guess what? 
we can be unified together. If we obey the simple truth of what he's saying, yes, there's white people that go that are going through the same thing, homeless, without food, on the, on the sides of the street, on the interstates, on the, on the expressways, as you come off the exits. I see white people all the time, black, Native American, whatever background they've come, I've seen everyone. We all have certain struggles that we're going through and we're lying to ourselves if we're embracing this woke ideology. We need to take responsibility. We need to wake up. And like he's saying here, we need to humble ourselves to this message so that we can be blessed. Because many of you out there may feel like he did oversimplify it. But in making it plain, guess what? We can finally own what really belongs to us. And we can really begin to move forward by the grace of God together. Now, I want to say this, that even though there may have been some who have been affected by racism, right? Because the, we're not going to deny that it exists still to this day. But like he's saying, I'm not going to sit up here and believe a lie that all black people everywhere are in the same predicament as it was back during, during the time of slavery. And he and one thing he's saying too, he's not talking about the whole thing about how they're taking it so far out to, oh, we need reparations and we need all these things, all this foolery. And you know what? We need to come together under the power of the gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit and be unified, loving one another. You know what loving one another looks like? Loving one another means when I see you in need, whether you're black, white, Native American, Hispanic, Arabic, Chinese, Asian, whatever you are, coming alongside of you and helping meet that need. The Bible says this, do you love God? You do well. The devil also believes and he trembles. He said, how can you say that you love me who you have not seen and not love your brother who you see every day? If you see your brother in need, and you have what he has need, and you just say, oh, brother, be blessed, be filled in Jesus' name. And he walk away starving. If you pray over him saying, be filled in the name of Jesus, and you don't bless him, and you have the power and the ability to bless him, your religion is in vain. Your relationship with God is not real. Because you can't say you love God who you don't see, and then watch your brother starve. It doesn't matter what their background is, how successful or unsuccessful they are. You can't say that the love of God is truly in you and you walk away and you see your brother in that condition. That's what is be that's what the scripture says. We're almost done here. Let's listen in. Now some of us think that just because the blessings don't materialize in three days that a thing doesn't work. Oh, you got to hang in there. Everybody's going to be tried. Everybody has to go through the crucibles of life. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise God, hears no. There's no one who gets every job that they apply for. See, the door's going to be slammed in your face after you pray. That's right, he's telling the truth. the Lord and the prophet of the prophetess came to time. They told you that God is getting ready to open up everything. So you thought he was going to do it the next day. All right, you went Monday and uh, and then the thing opened. So now you've dismissed all of the prophecy. No, 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 you're going to be tested. You're going to be tested. Joseph was tested. Abraham was tested. Everybody else was tested. You're going to be tested. You have to wait on the Lord. Do what is right and stay in your ground. And the Lord will bless you when the time is right. Okay, let me get to it. So, in closing, just like Bishop is saying here, let's let's take some things with us here. Let's let's really capture the moment. Take some things that Bishop has said and really begin to apply it to our lives. You know why? Because what he's saying is the truth. We need to truly, truly respond by faith. We need to respond to this message. What Bishop has said today, or on this, as I'm reacting to this video, 
What he said on that day to the church on June the 13th is so true. And we need it like our life depends on it. Why? Because the world is getting darker and darker. The church ought to get brighter and brighter. The church ought to be bringing people closer together. In Christ, our meeting point, our coming together is found in Christ. We are equally black, white, Native American, Hispanic, Arabic. In Christ, we are brothers and sisters, whether we like it or not. So we might as well get along here on earth. We might as well love one another now. We, we might as well care about one another right now. I know we live in a fallen world and we're going to have some challenges, but guess what? The gospel brings us together. The gospel is what we need. We need to keep living it out in community, not having segregated churches, not having separated churches. Everybody should be welcome. Everybody. And not just one set of color and leadership. I'll agree with that. Absolutely. But we all coming together. But it should never be where it's this one man show. Everyone's just, it's just centered around one man. The only man that should be centered around is Jesus Christ. Bringing us together. Walking in unity. Not, I'm not just going to respect a white pastor because he's white. Whether if my pastor's black, I'm going to respect him. If he's Hispanic, I'm going to I'm going to respect him. If he's African American, I'm going to respect him. No matter what nationality, Chinese, Asian, whatever nationality he may be, guess what? I'm going to respect him. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to submit myself to correction, instruction, and all that. Why? Because it's the Word of God that's right. And I'm going to study to show myself approved. So to all the pastors out there who are preaching a colored gospel, all the pastors who are up there talking about, oh, I'm sorry for being white and apologizing because you have no backbone. You, you don't understand this whole woke ideology. It's not about your skin color. You don't have control over that. It's about being honest. And it's, we're called to love one another and to walk in obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the gospel. Jesus said, the wall of partition between the Jews and the Gentiles has been broken down. And he took the two groups and made them one in Christ. And the church is comprised of both Jew and Gentile. And guess what? That means multiracial, multiethnic. It is very diverse. However, we must hold fast to the purity of the church. That doesn't mean we embrace other religions. That does not mean we embrace other alternative lifestyles other than what has been approved by God in the scriptures. Listen, I pray that you were blessed by just as much as I was by what Bishop Patrick Wooden had to say. I pray that you would like, share, and subscribe to this channel, that you would stay tuned in, and that you would bless others with this message and this reaction. And I pray that this was a reaction that is a blessing to you as much as it was for me. I'm your host, Pastor Stephen Woods. I thank you for tuning into this channel. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and be blessed.